I told you that in a month from now, you will be able to memorize a pack of cards by just looking at it once. And uh, you will be able to do that in under five minutes with a little bit of training. And what if I told you that that is all the knowledge you need to fundamentally understand how your memory and your brain works? And that knowledge will then help you in your everyday life, whether it comes to remember people's names, commit important information to memory, and then do it uh, as a presentation at work. Or if you're a school ch child who wants to score perfect on, your, on an exam. And what if, I, what if I told you also that this knowledge implemented in schools would change the way we see the school system, not only in Sweden, but in the whole world? My name is uh, Idris Zogai. I'm a memory athlete. I'm not some kind of a superstar or anything. Just, this is my alter ego. Uh, before the age of 25, I didn't know anything of what I know today. And the interesting thing with the age of 25 is that at the age of 25, that's when the brain becomes fully matured. That is, you are a grown-up. And before that, I knew nothing. I also finished, well, I knew a lot of things, but I also finished my university studies and was thinking, what happens now? What am I going to do now in my life? I've always been very interested in uh, traveling and getting to know other people, culture, etc. And that requires communication. So I was thinking, OK, I like a challenge, and I like to communicate with people, so I'm going to learn a language, a new language, something completely different from what I know now. Uh, I know the Latin alphabet, but I want to learn something that I don't understand when I look at it. It's like, let's say, Arabic or Chinese, Japanese. I even, even Hindi crossed my mind. So while I was looking, at courses I could take at home, because I was tired of the university life, I accidentally came across a book on memory. And I was thinking, I want to learn this new language the way children do it, by practicing, going somewhere and talking to the people, and in that sense, learning the language. I, I sort of don't like grammar, so this was my way of cheating away the grammar studies. So I thought, if I'm going to do it that way, I will come, want to come prepared. So I want to put a lot of words and phrases into memory and then go to that country or that part of the world. And uh, this book of memory was excellent. Why not start to read it and then see what happens? So I ordered the book and started to read and the, realized that it was all about, apparently all about techniques, like thinking the right way. And it wasn't that difficult. Uh, I was very picky with the language I wanted to learn, so I was like reading the book, doing some exercises, and like, several ye years went by, and I didn't uh, find any language to, to select. But in the meantime, I was doing these exercises and getting gradually better. And another interesting thing about this book was that at the end chapter, this uh, person talked about that you can compete in memory. And I was thinking, what? They have competitions in memory? I mean, this guy, Dominic O'Brien, had won the World Memory Championships six times, so he knew what he was talking about, but it was still competing in memory. And I was looking at the levels he suggested that you complete, and I realized, hold on, during this training, I've actually reached many of these levels. So I, start, I thought, okay, I will focus a little bit more, and that's when I started to train the pack of cards, and one of the levels was to do it in under five minutes. And in 2004, I felt ready. At the age of 27, I went to the um, World Memory Championships in Manchester. I thought, why not think big? Just go to the World Memory Championships. I came 22nd in the world. I also became Sweden's best memory, a title I will held for five consecutive years. So, when I came back, my friends were looking at me differently. <laughs> they were like, when did you become such a rain man? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, come on, you just went to the World Memory Championships and competed. Yes. 
So, yes, but I just read these techniques and adapted them. You did? And I don't feel different. I mean, I'm the same. Yeah, really. <laughs> but what do you do at the World Memory Championships? Well, we, we compete in memory, such as, well, every competition is 10 disciplines. It can be numbers, it can be binary digits, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. <laughs> Very funny. It can be, uh, that's, yeah, but it can also be words. It can be names and faces, people's names. It can be historic dates. Do you know that the world record for memorizing historic dates is about the same, as, is more even, than all the dates you learn throughout the school system, including high school. And this guy does it in five minutes. Imagine that, 12 years compressed to five minutes. So they, okay, but I think, I think it's easier if I show you. So they would take a pack of cards, shuffle it, not the one that we had before, it's shuffled. So they give it to me, and then while we're chit-chatting, I would uh, start, and then after a while they would ask me, Idris, when are you going to start? Well, actually, I'm already done. What do you mean? Yeah, well, take the card, the, the pack, split it anywhere you want. Okay, let's say there. So this is diamonds of nine. So what comes after diamonds of nine? What do you mean? Yeah, what, what is the card that comes after diamonds of nine? Uh, clubs of two, right? And what comes after clubs of two? Hearts of ten. And what comes after hearts of ten? A two fives. That's good. It's, uh, one is diamond and one is hearts. I would say that's one's a heart, so... Okay. So there was... Oh man, come on, how do you do this? Well, it's just about adapting techniques, and uh, actually I think it's easy if I show you with an exercise. Okay. Look at these two images. Do you see a connection between them? I give you a hint. There is no connection. It's just two randomly picked pictures. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to make a fun, vivid, animated story. Use all your senses, see how it looks like, feels like, to connect these two images together. And do it in 3D. Even though you don't have, don't have the 3D goggles, your brain is amazing, it can do it anyway. So project it in 3D. I'll give you a few seconds to do this. Here's how I would see it. Let's see at the audience where you're sitting. You see a big snail. You look next to you, you see a big snail. It has a door on it. You open the door, because it says welcome, so you open the door. I mean, you, you've never been inside a snail shell. You go in and oh, it's slimy in here. Why did I do that? Look at these two images. Okay, can you do the same? Make a story? Let's take the stairs where I came up. And you see a flamingo building a big brick wall. So it's like we have to climb over it. It's no point, but... <coughs> and these three, what do you think? We all know why elephants, you can see a big elephant there. You know all, you all know why they're strong, right? They carry a lot of weight. So they're... And you see a big giraffe up to the screen, and the skier, they're like, woohoo, I'm going to go skiing, yee-hoo, down the giraffe's neck. Look up on the roof. This is, the last one is a little bit obvious, right? Because you see uh, reptiles, they like to be in the sun. It's quite common. So you might think, this is an obvious one. This one I will remember. And that's the dangerous thing, because obvious things we tend to forget. I bet I could find people in this room that don't remember what they had for breakfast. Maybe today was different because you were going to TED, so you had breakfast later or whatever. But it's, co it's a common thing you do, so you, it's easy to forget, not to register it. So see the snake with big glasses, a nice drink, and enjoying the sun on the roof. And the drink is not spilling. So what, do we, what did we just do? Well, we let our brain have fun. And when we did that, we focused on the task. And when we focused on the task, we let our brains, we told our brain, this is important, remember this. So thus we used, we enforced the power of remembering. And so what is the brain? 
the brain is a biological lump of neurons. It contains about 3% of our body weight, but consumes 20% of our energy intake every day. And it doesn't matter if you're sitting in the audience, standing here talking, whatever you're doing, it's about the same level of energy consumption all the time. So it has a lot of neurons, and they like to connect to each other. And they can make tens of thousands of connections. This is also why we all are unique. I mean, it's impossible to copy, to make two identical brains. So we are all unique. And the stronger we make the connections, the longer we will remember the information. So we can make weak connections, and we forget them, because that's a natural thing. The brain selects... We, we always forget. That's a natural thing, because the brain, if you have a normal functioning brain, it sorts out information that is not impo important. But you can tell it what is important and what is not. And the stronger the connections you make, the longer you will remember it. And this knowledge, I would say today that students study too much. And the reason they do, they, I could say that, is because many students today don't know how to put the information into their brain. So they study and study and study and study. It becomes late, they go late to bed, wake up tired. Instead of putting the information in their brain in the way the brain likes to have it. And then they can rest, commit time to the hobby, spend time with the family, and then do a repetition of the information they learned. But if you don't know that the information is there, you don't trust your brain. And if you don't trust your brain, you study all the time. So I will prove this to you, that your brain actually is better than you might think yourself. The exercise we did before, I do with five-year-olds. But then we use 30 pairs. So don't feel any pressure. <laughs> okay. Look at this image. <coughs> There's something missing, right? I bet your brain fills in the gaps. So if I say wait, you say... <laughs> Thank you. And I, if I say bricks, you say... <laughs> and if I say the obvious one? <laughs> Thank you. I did, yeah. If I say door, you say... <laughs> and if I say ski? <laughs> yeah. And if I told you, give them to me in the right order, as they came up, what would you do? You would close your eyes, go to the first place, go to the second place, go to the third place, the fourth place, and the roof is the last one. Give them to me backwards. You just go backwards. And this is what we do at memory competitions. We just put, now we, you memorize 10 words. And that's what we, we, one of the events, to memorize words. So you can go to a competition and perform. The only thing we do is that we do it faster and longer. I mean, it's very interesting to note that the world record for memorizing a pack of cards by just looking at them once, as fast as possible, is about the same time it takes Usain Bolt to run 200 meters. Think of that the next time you see, you watch the Olympics. When he starts, you start to see how many cars you remember. <laughs> now, I don't know Usain Bolt, but I know the world record holder for the cards, Simon Reinhardt, and I know how much he trains. But I know he doesn't do anything different from what we did just before. So he just structures the knowledge he puts into his brain. He looks at the information once. And he knows it, in, it, it sticks there. So it's all about having fun and letting the brain make strong connections. And then there's no limits. I have a friend who comes and helps me to organize the Swedish Memory Championships every year. Now, if this would be, if we have a scale here of the mat, over the mat, here is a person that has difficulty with memory. Here is the normal, you know, this normal shell 
uh, formed bell. Here is what most people will be. And here is where the genius are, the super memories. So when she came in first 2009, I contacted the Salgenska, and um, told them, why don't you run some tests, a memory test on this? Because I like to work with the scientists to, to show them that what we are doing, because there's not so much re research going on in this area. And uh, the guy who did the research on her, which is actually that guy, the same guy who did his paintings, Jakob Stolhammer, he said, like, Idris, we have to redo the scale, because she's over there, she's outside of our scale. <laughs> what she did is, like, way outside. We have to, this, how can you do this? Yeah, but you haven't studied what we do. Because it's like we would invent sports today, and all of a sudden people are running. Oh, they're, they're moving so fast. <laughs> but we're not doing anything else. We're just doing how the way, the way, working with the brain, how the brain likes to work. And the techniques are very old. I mean, the oldest one comes from the Greeks, the ancient Greeks. That's several thousand years ago. So we didn't invent anything, we just packed it into this, and it's the training that has done it. And you can start your training right here, right now. The next time you hear something you want to remember, make a fun story of it, and you will make strong connections. So happy practicing. Thank you.